ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुधीर नष्टाशु भद्रेशु नित्यं भागवत सेवया भगवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टिकी श्रीमद्भागवत कैंटो टेन चैप्टर सेवेंटीन टेक्स्ट वन टू थ्री श्रीराजवाच नागल्यम रमणक कथम तत्जे कालिया किं वा सुपर्ण से तेन एक असमंजसम श्रीराजवाच नागल्यम रमणक कथम तत्ज कालिया कितम किं वा सुपर्ण से तेन एक असमंजसम श्रीराजवाच नागल्यम रमणक कथम तत्ज कालिया कितम किं वा सुपर्ण से तेन एक असमंजसम लेडीज नारायण रमणक कथम तत्ज काल वर्ड बाय वर्ड मीनिंग श्री राज उवाच द किंग सेड नाग ऑफ द सरपेंट्स आलय रेजिडेंस रमनकम द आइलैंड नेम रमनक कथम वाई तत्याज गेव कालिय कालिया कितम वाज मेड किम वा एंड वाई सुपर्ण से ऑफ गरुड़ तेना विद हिम कालिया 
एकेन एलोन असमंजसम एनमिटी ट्रांसलेशन हैविंग दस हर्ड हाउ लॉर्ड कृष्णा चेस्टाइज कालिया किंग प्रेक्षित इंक्वायर्ड वाई डिड कालिया लीव रमनाका आईलैंड द एबोर्ड ऑफ द सरपेंट्स एंड वाई डिड गरुड़ा बिकेम बिकम सो एंटीग्नोस्टिक टूवर्ड हिम ए लोन सेंस देर इज नो परपट टू टेक्स्ट वन वील बी रीडिंग ट्रांसलेशन परपट ऑफ टेक्स्ट टू एंड थ्री ऑल्सो टेक्स्ट ट्रांसलेशन टेक्स्ट टू एंड थ्री शुभदेव गोस्वामी सेड टू शुभदेव गोस्वामी सेड टू वाइड बींग ईटन बाय गरुड द सरपेंट्स हैड प्रीवियसली मेड एन अरेंजमेंट विद हिम वेयर बाय दे वुड ईच मेक ए मंथली ऑफरिंग ऑफ ट्रिब्यूट at the base of a tree thus every month on schedule o mighty arm king prikshit each serpent would duly make his offering to that powerful carrier of vishnu as a purchase of protection purport shri shridhar swami has given an alternate explanation of this verse वो पहाड़े मे हैव मे ऑल्सो बी ट्रांसलेटेड एज बाय दोज हु आर टू बी ईटन एंड सर्प जन एज दोज ह्यूमन बींग्स हु आर डोमिनेटेड बाय और हु बिलोंग टू अ सर्पेंट रेस अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस रीडिंग ए ग्रुप ऑफ ह्यूमन बींग्स हैड फॉलन अंडर द कंट्रोल ऑफ द सर्पेंट एंड वर्क रोन टू बी ईटन बाय दैम टू अवॉइड दिस the human beings would make a monthly offering to serpents who in turn would offer a portion of that offering to garuda so that he would not eat them the particular translation given above is based on the commentary of shila sanatan goswami and a translation by shila prabhupad in his krishna the supreme personality of godhead in any case all the acharyas agree that the serpents purchase protection from garuda i am reading portion of the chapter summary in the beginning this chapter describes how kaliya left the island of the snakes and how the sleeping residents of vindavan were saved from a forest fire when king parikshit inquired about kaliya's leaving ramanaka island the abode of the serpents and about why gauda acted inimically towards him shri shukde goswami replied as follows all the serpents on the island were afraid of being devoured by gauda to placate him every month they would leave various offerings for him at the foot of the banyan tree but kaliya puffed up as he was with false pride would eat those offerings himself hearing of this gauda became furious and went to kill kaliya where upon the snake began biting the great bird garuda fiercely garuda fiercely beat him with his wing sending kaliya fleeing for his life to a lake adjoining the yamuna river prior to the above incident garuda had once come to the yamuna and started eating some fish sobri rishi had tried to stop him but garuda agitated by hunger had refused to heed to the sage's prohibitions and in response the sage had cursed garuda that if he ever came there again he would immediately die kali had heard of this and thus he lived there without fear in the end however he was driven out by shri krishna mama gyanate me randasya gyananjana shalakaya चक्षुर्मित तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम विष्णुपदा कृष्णपृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमतीभक्तिदातस्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वतदेव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषशून्यवादी पाश्चातिदेशिणे 
वाचा गुभ्यसुभे वच पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअदाधार श्रीवासदी गौर्भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू Uh, frankly admit that i have not read 10th canto <laughs> but because devotees asked me to give class so i am trying my best by prabhu's mercy acharya's mercy vishnu's mercy something will come so this is a interesting story uh, how garuda became inimical uh, so called inimical he is a pure devotee personal association with lord and therefore he cannot become but to understand the principle uh, and how kaliya in fear of garuda came to yamuna river so chapter begins with maharaj prikshit inquiring from shukdev goswami and what was so what so happened that garuda had a uh, particular enmity or antagonistic ness toward the particularly towards kaliya ek hai na particularly towards kaliya so shukdev goswami is narrating this to past time and with prabhu par explains it in krishna book and the further purpose by the uh, disciples of shri prabhu par <clears throat> that garuda kaliya was living in the island named ramnaka which is the abode of the residents of uh, abode of residents of the residents of the serpents and garuda would naturally go there to catch some snakes serpents to eat why should not to get too worried about this that what is this pure devotee he is going uh, this is his natural food shri prabhu explains and the purport says also explain that is natural food ordained by the supreme lord krishna for garuda and we'll find in this past time the goda will come to yamuna river the lake on the yamuna river uh, to eat fishes also and that is also a natural natural food for goda ordained by krishna even the ordinary birds when they go to eat you know fish or you know ordinary peacocks or other birds like goda not goda in the sense pure devotee like goda but eagles and all that they go to eat snakes there is no offense in that there is nothing wrong in that so gauda would go to ramnak island and he would eat catch many snakes to eat and in that fight sometimes you know more than more snakes than what gauda has to eat were killed so the snakes they, the serpents they approached lord brahma and lord brahma made this arrangement that every month uh once in a month the serpents will make make an offering to garuda under a particular tree and garuda would come and take that offering and that was the arrangement made so but kaliya he became very puffed up with the why is he has accumulated when i read it yesterday i was very surprised that someone can be puffed up of the accumulated poison that's how prabhupada writes he became puffed up with accumulated poison poison is just your accumulated poison what is it so big about it <laughs> of course we can say kaliya is natural thing for kaliya also to accumulate poison and everyone is puffed up as long as we are not pure devotees of krishna everyone is puffed up of the accumulated wealth and kaliya's accumulated wealth was poison so i have one point of time i was quite surprised when i read that kaliya became puffed up of the accumulated poison but then by mercy of prabhu pad i got a reflection even today most of the things we are doing in the materialistic world are quite poisonous the poisonous gases we are releasing from the vehicles and all that and we are also quite puffed up the modern civilization of the modern inventions the nuclear energy and all those things are quite puffed up 
which are nothing but accumulated poison. So that is a tendency in this world where we live that unless until we surrender to Krishna through a pure devotee like Srila Prabhupada, pride is always a great danger, always a great danger. Even in very naturally accumulated things, the Kalya to accumulate poison was something very natural. It was not doing anything unnatural. Modern civilization were doing many unnatural things. But even for that, Kaliya became very puffed up with false pride. And he was very strong also. On one hand, a lot of poison has been gathered. On the other hand, a lot of strength, physical strength, Kaliya had. So he became very puffed up and decided that no more offering to Garuda. And not only no, not that no more offering to Garuda, whatever the serpents would offer for Garuda, Kaliya would finish it. Kaliya would finish it. So, naturally, when Garuda came to know of this, he became very furious and he went to attack Kaliya. Went to attack Kaliya. Again, Garuda is pure devotee, but just like Arjuna for Kshatriya, it is very natural to, you know, fight for right cause. For Garuda to go and attack Kaliya, there is nothing wrong in that. Yes. So Garuda, he went and attacked Kaliya. Kaliya tried his best, he tried to bite Garuda uh, and he even bit Garuda with his poison. But just by the wings of Garuda, just by the wings, Garuda bit, uh, he bit, uh, beated Kaliya. And Kaliya had to run away from that place. So, and then Shukta Goswami is also narrating, how did Kaliya, why Kaliya came here? What was so special in the Yamuna River, the lake adjoining Yamuna River, or lake inside the Yamuna River, what was so special? Why Kaliya chose this place? When he ran away from Garuda, fear of Garuda, why he chose this place? So long back, Swabri Rishi, he was doing his tapasya here, in the Yamuna River, under the water, that is discussed in ninth canto. Prabhupada, uh, the disciples of Prabhupada, they give a summary here. Prabhupada also talks of that in the Krishna book. Uh, that Swabri Rishi was doing tapasya here, and when at that time Garuda, he came here once to eat fish. Again, very natural food for you, Garuda. There was no reason for Sobri Rishi to become upset with this. There was no reason for Sobri Rishi to become upset with this. But when Garuda came here to eat fish, the Sobri Muni, Sobri Muni, he had a false sense of compassion. This is a very important thing to understand. The compassion, mercy, it must be within the principles given by the Supreme Lord. The so-called compassion of Sobri Rishi was wrong. Sobri Rishi felt that he is very compassionate on the fishes. And out of great compassion for the fishes, he is trying to save the fish. This false compassion, according to Acharyas, the, for this false compassion was also the, because of the reason of the false pride of Sobri Muni. Somehow the Sobri Muni has also become proud of his austerity. And that led to this false idea of compassion. False idea of compassion. So, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains, you know, uh, compassion, charity, etc. Particularly charity, he talks of in mode of goodness, mode of passion, mode of ignorance. So these considerations are important in showing mercy to somebody else also. Bhagavad Gita is the basis. Jara Dekhe Tara Kahe Krishna Upadesh. Lord Chaitanya emphasized on this. That Bhagavad Gita is the basis of our entire understanding. Krishna's Upadesh. So fishes, they are natural food for Garuda. So Prabhupada explains, uh, the Acharyas explain here, that he 
Sobhri Muni, he wanted to stop Garuda. He wanted to forbid Garuda for eating fishes from that place, from that lake. Garuda is a person associated with Krishna, Lord Narayana, and therefore he has no reason to obey Sobhri Muni. But, but being a pure devotee of the Lord, he still, uh, when Sobhri Muni told him that you shouldn't come here to eat the fish, uh, Garuda obliged. Garuda obliged. But as he was living, as he was living, Sobhri Muni told you should not come here. He, right now he is here only, na? So this is not applicable at this point of time. So as he was living, Gauda was very hungry and as he was living, he picked up one fish and left. <laughs> and this is not disobeying the sage also. But uh, Sobri Muni, he became very angry because of the false pride. False pride. The explanation given by Acharya is the Sobri Muni thought that how can he disobey my order? And at that point of time, he couldn't even think about whom is he thinking that he has disobeyed my order. He is a great personality, the pure devotee of the Lord, the personal carrier of Lord Vishnu. About him, how can you think that he disobeyed my order? But the danger of pride is like this. The danger of pride is like this. So, Sobri Muni, because of pride, of the, you know, uh, what strength he has gained based on the austerities, felt like this. That how can Garuda disobey my order? First of all, uh, one cannot order even a Brahmana according to Vedic scriptures. And then what to talk of Vaishnava? And then what to talk of Vaishnava uh, like Garuda? There is no question of ordering him anything. And above that, becoming angry, even when he has agreed, even when Garuda has agreed to not come again to that place. So Sobri Muni, carried by the false pride and the false compassion, he said that, you know, if Garuda comes here again, he will be killed by my curse. So that's as I explained, this is a very, very, you know, wrong mentality he got that for such an exalted person you are one is thinking that he is supposed to follow my order and if he doesn't follow my order I will kill him. So this constituted the Vaishnava Pradh. Now it was not only just pride, it was not only false compassion, it ended up in Vaishnava Pradh now. So this is Lord Chaitanya has very important instructions for all of us in that uh, we have to avoid Vaishnava Prad. He is Mahavadanya, he is most merciful and he is able to forgive for any other mistakes uh, except uh, Vaishnava Prad. And uh, of course to guard against Vaishnava Prad, uh, Lord Chaitanya has given us the beautiful formula of Trinada Pishwani Chain through Oriva Saishnana. Because what leads to Vaishnava Aparad is this false pride, this false pride. Kaliya also because of false pride tried to take away the offerings of Garuda and Sobri Muni also. There is no, at least whatever I read from Krishna book and this chapter, there is no mention of Kaliya doing Vaishnava Aparad. That was just a mistake, that's how it was written. But Sobhri Rishi directly uh, attacking Garuda. And the Jayas explained that there was a double offense on the part of Sobhri Muni. One was that he uh, tried to order a great personality who was much above his status. Just trying to order great personality like Garuda was an offence. And second part of the offence was to stop Garuda from eating its natural food. 
इस नेचुरल फूड एक तो वन साइड ऑर्डरिंग ए प्योरिटी बॉडी सेकेंड साइड नॉट इवन गिविंग हिम हिज नेचुरल फूड और डेंट बाई कृष्णा फूड विच इज डेंट बाई कृष्णा सो दिस ऑफेंस ड्यू टू दिस ऑफेंस सॉबली मुनि लेटर ऑन हैड टू फॉल डाउन हैड टू फॉल डाउन he got attracted when he saw the fishes copulating and he came out and he married 50 women that story is long story is briefly mentioned by prabhupad in krishna book uh, just in one or two lines that much i am mentioning uh, and it is get yeah, marrying is not a big thing but uh, it is said there that after marrying he suffered very greatly Married life also not smooth. So he suffered very greatly because of the offence towards Goda. Similarly, we find the story story of uh, uh, Gopal Chappal. He was also very puffed up, and he wanted to stop Sri Vas Thakur. Of course, Gopal Chappal's offence was more direct. He wanted to directly uh, stop Sri Vas Thakur. He was very envious that Lord. Chaitanya at that time, Nimai, was able to be doing sankirtan at Sri Vas Thakur's house. There was no reason to become envious of this. But pride is like this: what thing we can become envious of when we are proud? At that time, logic doesn't work. That time, logic doesn't work. Later on, Swami Rishi did become, you know. Uh, Uh, elevated it is mentioned here in the by the charge that because he had taken shelter of yamuna river once properly so he was uh, later on reinstated so today sobhi rishi must be hearing this class somewhere and he must be thinking at that time also you know when pride comes uh, what was the reason to stop roda from eating fish and many other birds also might be coming na to eat fish and in the in the in the in the lake the smaller fishes are being eaten by bigger fish wahan pe that place is not becoming angry that why they are eating it is a very strange thing which happened very strange thing very and inexplicable why so but acharya has explained that false pride false pride similarly gopal chapal There was no reason to become, you know, disturbed that Shiva uh, Shiva's Thakur's house kirtan is happening. A simple kirtan is happening. The kirtan is not disturbing anyone. Kirtan is not harming anyone. What is the harm? What is the difficulty Gopal Chappal was facing? But he became very envious of Shiva's Thakur, and he wanted to defame Shiva's Thakur. If I cannot stop, at least let me defame him. So it's called you, Anna. So Gopal Chappal is not powerful like Sobri Rishi. He tried, didn't try to curse Shiva Shaku. <laughs> of course, at that time some rumors were spread that you know the Mughal uh, soldiers are coming and they will throw Shiva Shaku and his whole family into Ganges. All those things were done. So, but Gopal Chappal, one point of time, kept the we all know the story, kept the paraphernalia of Durga worship outside the house of Shiva Shaku. and this way he wanted to defame shri vas thakur and the reaction was again gopal chappal had to suffer a lot a lot and the most merciful lord chaitanya uh, when he approached him that you be merciful on on the first uh, first instance when he approached lord chaitanya nimai uh, nimai said are papi bhakt dveshi tore na udhari mu Uh, Lord Shiva said that you are envious of devotees, and therefore I will never deliver you. And then he said, "Koti janam ei matra, uh, ei matra kira ekhoi mu." For millions of lives, I will make you suffer like this. On the head, leprosy. So worms were biting him all over his body. And Lord Shiva said that for many lives you have to suffer like this. 
A second instance when he begged forgiveness from Lord Chaitanya, that time Lord Chaitanya revealed, because he was after all most merciful, he revealed that Gopal Chapal can beg forgiveness from Srivas Thakur. Of course, Srivas Thakur never took the offense. Just like here we find Garuda never took the offense. Garuda never took the offense. So, this was the reason that Garuda, out of respect for uh, Sobri Rishi, this is amazing. Gauda need not follow the order of Swabri Rishi. And Swabri Rishi is a statement that if Gauda doesn't listen to my order and he comes to eat fish here, he will be killed. Gauda is transcendental, he can never be killed. There is no question of killing of Gauda. His body is not material body. So anyway, so Gauda didn't have to worry about it. But still, out of respect for Sobhuvishri, he would not come to a lake. And this was known to Kaliya, that he will not come here. Garuda will not come here. So therefore, Kaliya, he came and made residence there. And the Acharya say, Sobhuvishri's desire to protect the fishes was also spoiled. The false compassion. The false compassion cannot help anyone. When Gauda was coming, his natural system ordained by Krishna. Even if you don't assume, even if you forget Gauda is a pure devotee, it's natural system ordained by Krishna. And that you are stopping out of false compassion. And what was the result? Kaliya came there and all the fishes died. In one go. So what he wanted to do, achieve by his false compassion, that also was not attained. He left, otherwise he would have also died. <laughs> and Kaliya came. He left because of the offense he had to leave Yamuna. He left. And then Kaliya came there and all the fishes also died. So there is great danger in false pride and uh, the particularly when the false pride turns into Vaishnava Prat. So Srila Prabhupada has very mercifully uh, given us a very beautiful system uh, where we have a you know, very strong association of devotees where we are practicing together chanting Hare Krishna and all that. And particularly uh, in that practice Srila Prabhupada has added the meditation on the Trinadha Prishwini Chain verse on daily basis, uh, we sing Sishtashtakam before Japam. So, this is Krishna Prabhupada's very special mercy. One time, one uh, God brother of Srila Prabhupada, at that time, Abhay Babu, uh, Abhay Charande, uh, Abhay Charnavinda, <coughs> he was having his uh, pharmacy business, and one of the disciples of Bhakti Siddhanta, he met Prabhupada at his home, Abhay at his home, and he asked him, Abhay Babu, you are making many pharmaceutical items, many medicines you are manufacturing. Have you made any, any medicine for Krishna Prem? Any medicine for Krishna Prem? So Prabhupada said, formula is ready, product has to be made. <laughs> and his God brother inquired from him, what is the formula? What is the formula? And Abhay, Avashila Prabhupada replied, Trinadha Pishuni Chena, Toriya Sahishnuna, Amani Na Mandena, Ketani Sadai. Only difference is the medicine we have to make. <laughs> it's a self. Everyone has to make this for self. Formula is given by Lord Chaitanya. And uh, Shri Prabhupada has mercifully uh, given us this. Uh, Bhakti and Thakur also given us beautiful meditation on this in his songs. Uh, or Vaishnava Thakur, Diyar Sagar, Guru Dev Kripa Bindu Diya. And Prabhupada gave us those songs also in the Vaishnava book, Vaishnava song book to read, uh, regularly sing and all, to meditate on this. And this is our shelter, chanting the Hare Krishna Mantra, association of devotees, and being always very respectful and uh, uh, obedient to the superior Vaishnavas. Uh, in this way, we can be uh, saved from this very, very, very dangerous situation. 
very dangerous situation of uh, false pride catching us and then taking us to the side of you know passing judgment and all that we are we might not uh, end up you know trying to curse the devotee and all that because we know we know that curse will not come to its uh, it's only you know it will only prove that we are very <laughs> our words don't come true <laughs> but uh, in the heart also holding something negative for devotees is very very risky very risky and that is only because of the false pride if we do that so that is the message in this uh, in this section from the krishna book and the uh, chapter summary and this purports uh, please forgive me for if i had said something wrong or with wrong intention or wrong attitude uh, any questions then you can take just go I, uh, as far as I could understand the question, the question is that there are many instances in the Bhagavatam where this principle is explained. Yes, there, there are many. I'm saying that there are many slokas that, uh, uh, in some ways, they might seem uh, irrelevant to the final point of our uh, going back to Godhead. And so, in this particular sloka. What can we take from that that will encourage us or give us a deeper insight into uh, our uh, progress in spiritual life? From this particular shloka? Yes. Oh, <laughs> frankly speaking, I, I could understand the entire section only. Singular shloka, even I can't say. From the entire section, this is the message which is derived by the Acharyas and the Srila Prabhupada in the Krishna book. That's what I know. From particular shloka, I don't know. <laughs> I can see that in Srimad Bhagavatam, there's some really incredible and fantastic um, descriptions of the universe and of the various living beings and how they live. So sometimes our, maybe our reason, common sense and intelligence is challenged and how does one not uh, like uh, lose one's faith? Because faith is people think that there's no God or that, that this life is the only life so there's nobody governing me and do whatever I want. But then when you hear such very fantastic things which don't tell you their common sense, how should we view that? Should you just accept it blindly? <laughs> I we ask hard questions in We ask hard questions. <laughs> uh, I will try to answer to you can correct me. <laughs> so basically these uh, stories which are in the Bhagavatam, they are factual stories. It's not that uh, they are not factual stories, but the charge which is done generally by the materialistic society about the Bhagavatam or the Puranas that they don't fit the uh, common sense. The charge is actually, I would say the charge is coming from a not common sense because the problem is with the modern society what they are doing is that think they have already assumed that there is nothing higher than the human beings. And then with that assumption they are saying that all this doesn't make common sense. But the wrong assumption itself is there that any the mention any mention of beings higher than human beings is taken by them as mythology. 
that assumption itself is wrong and that assumption itself is based on basically ignorance and pride on what basis are our modern scientists or modern people they are assuming that there there are no beings which are higher than human beings so shrimad bhagavatam and the puranas they are revealing us the the realm which we can approach by earth you know four defects that is we will never be able to approach these things because we have four defects unless until we hear from the acharyas like shila prabhupada and but these are factual stories there is no doubt about it that these are just like prabhupada would explain that you know i heard one lecture prabhupada prabhupada said the in the rainy season there are moths which take birth during the sunset time and by sunrise they die and if the if these moths they start doing research in their life span then they can never conclude what is life span of human being it's just beyond their experience if someone comes from outside and tells them that these human beings they live for 80 years that means 80 into 365 into 2 of your life span because they live only for 8 to 8 to 12 hours and they they can dismiss it all mythology or they can put faith so then the question may be raised that why should we put faith in prabhu pad or shukdev go swami and acharyas so as far as the credibility is concerned there's much more credibility in the acharyas and all that their qualities their character their credibility their attitudes their compassion rather than the modern people who are eating meat and all that and in engage in the illicit relationships and all that so they are saying this is all mythology this so it's up to me to whom which quality of person i will believe and then also the chanting of the hari krishna mantra which uh, prabhupada has emphasized a lot that opens us to the reality actually that takes us beyond our bodily limitation that's the purpose is in the famous translation of the meaning of the hari krishna mantra it surpasses the intellectual mental sensual platform and takes us to a higher realm so all that combined you would like to add something for that thank you please said that anyone who hears these past times is blessed in, in freedom since so just in response to go up for the blessing meaning just by hearing the amazing past time of bhagavad gita and purifying themselves yes hari Uh, here we are talking about compassion. This compassion of Sodom he was false. Sort of, he's thinking that he is better than fish. But on the other hand, the compassion of Nagavati on Kariya was it false or was it real coming from their hearts? And why not be the compassion of Kariya was so arrogant? So, uh, the question is the compassion of Nagpatni on Kaliya. There are many considerations in that too. Uh, one consideration is that it is the dharma of the wife. So, it is scriptural com- compassion. Even though Kaliya was acting inimical to first to Garuda, then to Krishna now, and Nagpatni were the great devotees of Lord, but what they did was. within the scriptures so basically shastra praman ultimately that is the first thing that uh, that is the duty the scriptural given duty of the wife to pray for the husband's protection or mother for children's protection or even for wi- husband for wife's protection these are the uh, relationships which krishna has given us we cannot become i cannot choose just like i cannot choose to become someone's father i can become i can choose to become someone's son this that is that choice is not in our hand according to vedic system whose husband or whose wife we become that is also not our choice that is also ordained by god all that may appear that we are going on matrimonial site and we are choosing and all that is ultimately devanitrena that's a word used prabhu also quoted quotes like jantu devanitrena 
so that is ordained by krishna so krishna has made your father mother king or whatever spouse so that is natural dharma for the protection and they also paid for the spiritual protection of kali also not just the body so that way also they did their complete job not <laughs> for protection of the body after that kaliya gave up in enmity also na hari krishna thank you so much class uh how much it is we tomorrow we should reach it what comes first like we have to do the first part and then we have to do the second part no no the the way shri prabhu explained it is that we practice chanting hari krishna mantra under the guidance of guru sadhu shastra and that guidance is primarily to avoid offenses das na aprad ten offenses against the holy name and gradually we elevate get elevated and when we stop committing offenses that time we can 24 hour chant tabe to gai bo hari naam sukhe अपराध हवे हाथ वेन अपराध इज फिनिश्ड दैट टाइम वन कैन ट्वेंटी फोर आवर चैंट हरिकेश मंत्र टिल दैट टाइम द वे प्रोपर टॉट एस इज दैट द वे भगवत टीच इज एस दैट मॉर्निंग एंड इवनिंग वी आर एंगेजिंग इन द संकीर्तन एंड जग्ञा एंड ऑल दैट संकीर्तन जग्ञा डे टाइम वी हैव अवर यू नो सर्विस इज टू डू दैट सॉ प्रोपर सेट वर्क नाउ समाधि लेटर इफ इट राइट नाउ ट्राई टू जम्प इन टू ट्वेंटी फोर आवर चैंटिंग हरिकृष्णा मंत्र it will not work because till that time the kirtan is sada hari is the seva the seva is also kirtan the seva which we do in the temple book distribution or cleaning or cooking that is also for to glorify guru and krishna so it is also kirtan but if you are talking of 20 hour chanting hari krishna that is possible only when one is free from all offense to bhakti mein thakur is very clear tabe to gai bo हरि नाम सुख अपराध हो गया था Thank you, Guru. Time is up. Nine o'clock. Shri Prabhu Pargi Jai, Nandkoti Vishnu Bindu Jai. Thank you, Guru Pramod.